watching Jay Gruden leave RG3 in last week's preseason game against the Detroit Lions, Mike Freeman of the Bleacher Report texted an NFL head coach to get his thoughts, his immediate reply. I have never, ever, on any level, seen a head coach treat his quarterback with such a lack of respect. What is baffling is that I can't think of a single head coach in the NFL who would take an injury-prone quarterback, put him behind a very shaky offensive line in a preseason game, watch him take those kind of hits, and leave him in the game. It looks personal to me. That quote was anonymous. Skip, help me out. What's going on here? Molly, Stephen A. Smith. I'm with the anonymously quoted coach here in Mike Freeman's excellent piece in the Bleacher Report. I find it increasingly offensive and baffling to listen and watch the way Jay Gruden treats or mistreats Robert Griffin III. We've talked and talked about this, Stephen A., and I realize that R.G. Me has brought a, a number of these things upon himself with some of the comments he's made in public. But I do not understand quotes like I read j just from yesterday's media session from Jay Gruden. You can call this a little thing. I think it's becoming a big thing because in this quote, Jay Gruden co talks about how Kirk and Colt, as in Cousins and McCoy, have done some great things out here in practice every day. Robert's done some good things out here in practice. Really? That's a shot. I don't care. He took shot after shot after shot to Jay Gruden last year. It's gone over the edge. It's becoming, as Mike Freeman concluded in his piece, personal. I don't like Robert's chances here with this head coach. It's, it's either this guy or this guy. Are you going to go with the coach or are you going to go with the quarterback? I guess, once again, it's going to come back to the owner, Dan Snyder, who has coddled to a fault the quarterback in the past. But it, it's, you're going to have to choose between one or the other. Either Jay Gruden's going to get himself fired or Robert's going to get himself cut. It's, it's come down to that. I definitely agree with you, Skip Bayless. I, de I definitely think that the, that the, the coach is, has not, um, I think he's been excessively critical of, of RG3. Uh, we all have lamented how RG3 may have brought some of it on himself. Uh, particularly, there's a discomfort with the relationship that he has with Daniel Snyder by other players in that locker room and obviously, in all likelihood, the coach as well. Where I give absolutely zero latitude to Jay Gruden is in this respect. Part of the reason he got the job was by convincing Daniel Snyder of his ability to work with RG3. If he was forced to inherit RG3 or something like that, that would be different. He sold himself for the job by advertising himself and marketing himself as somebody who could work with RG3, who could fix whatever problems that he had, and who would do a better job of it than Mike Shanahan. And to get the job under those conditions and then to be so critical of RG3, I do believe it's personal. Mm. It does. I would say this to you. I believe it's personal because it appears to be personal. If we're wrong, Jay Gruden has to own the fact that he has something to do yep. with how it looks. I completely concur. And my bottom line to this is if you step away from it, Robert has done more, achieved more at his position of quarterback in the National Football League in his rookie year than Jay Gruden has shown me as a head coach so far. And again, no offense to John Gruden, we all love John, but J Jay still has a lot to prove as a head coach. Robert proved it for a while until he got hurt. So I'm, I'm going to side with Robert here. Well, no disrespect, but Jay Gruden is no John Gruden. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. He hasn't proven it. Agree. All right, we'll leave it there. Do the Bronx Bombers have anything to prove after last night? H down, shut it, shut it down. It was so bad, benches cleared. We'll react to the night after the break. First Take is presented by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. And in part by Ace, the helpful place. About last night, the Astros beat the Yanks 15 to 1, and the Blue Jays rallied in the ninth for a 6 to 5 win over the Rangers. The Yanks now trail the Jays by one game in the AL East. Skip your Blue Jays pick. You're still confident, my friend. Wait a minute. <laughs> did, did Molly just say 15 to 1? Wait. 
the New York Yankees lost 15 to legit teams don't lose 15 to 1. And by the way, my Blue Jays did have a miraculous top of the ninth rally at Texas to win 6 to 5. And I'm going to say to you, Mr. Smith, what Carlos Gomez yelled at the Yankees dugout and Joe Girardi, just shut up about your Yankees. Just shut up. <laughs> New York Yankees have about eight to ten games left against the Toronto Blue mm -hmm. Jays. We're coming. We shall see what happens then. Last night, she aberration. Bad night. No big deal. Relax. No big deal. Mere bag of mere bag. Yankee shell. He's Cali cool right now. Mere bag of shell. Yeah. Don't even worry about it. Mere bag of shell of cells. Oh, skip. That's, skip. What, that's what it is. I, I'm, I, I'm, about to, I'm about to go to Rodeo Drive. Whatever. Check you later. Whatever. Yeah. Get yeah, rid of this man. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Earlier, that Cowboys corner Orlando Skandrick is done for the season with a torn ACL and MCL and will undergo surgery, according to our Ed Werder. Our Antonio Pierce is still here with us. Antonio, with Skandrick out, what does the NFC East landscape look like now? Well, one, if I'm a Cowboy fan, I, I'm nervous. <laughs> you lose DeMarco Murray in free agency. You lose one of your better defensive players in Skandrick, a leader in that secondary, which struggled last year. And and you and you got guys like Carr and and and, and uh, Morris Claiborne. Yeah, he's, yep. you know, he's coming back from yep. injury. Um, but more importantly, look at that division. Who you got to guard? We just talked about Odell Beckham, the Victor Cruz for the Giants. Then you got Deshaun Jackson as well. How do you fit in defensively, stopping these elite wide receivers in the game without one of your better cornerbacks? Who you can move around a slot. Blitz them off the edge, a good tackler, just a good overall player. So for me, you have to now look at the Philadelphia Eagles and what how they performed the other night against the Ravens with multiple quarterbacks. Everybody in that Chip Kelly offense looks outstanding now. Tim Tebow, mm -hmm. great job coming back to football because now you might be a starter at some point. So to me, you got to look at the Eagles, what they did with DeMarco Murray, signed him, Ryan Matthews as well, bringing in Sam Bradford who looks very comfortable in that system as Eagle, the Philadelphia Eagles is being the favorite in the NFC East. Mm. Stephen A., we need some Skip cowboy Bayless. hate. Skip Bayless. Yeah. As you know, you know, just a few months ago, I looked at the Cowboys, looked at their personnel, looked at the fact that even though they had a couple of dudes who couldn't stay off the weed, mm. I looked at all of these different things. I still said because of Dez, because of Tony Romo, uh, because of the weapons, the requisite weapons that they had at their disposal that the Cowboys would win the NFC East. But obviously, because it was so early, we both reserved the right mm -hmm. to change our minds. Yeah. You know, today, I'm officially doing just I that. I knew it. I, I'm I rolling this. with the Philadelphia. I, I'm rolling with the Philadelphia Eagles to win the yeah. NFC East. And I reserved the right to change my mind on that because I might pick the Giants, who it won't be is the Dallas Cowboys. Because I believe, Skip Bayless, that the accident waiting to happen has and will continue to happen as this season progresses. That's what I think is going to happen. Now, when I look at the Philadelphia Eagles, let me just get this out of the way. Suspect on the changes that Chip Kelly made, no doubt about it, but improving your secondary. I mean, with the Byron Maxwell, with the Walter Thurman the third. when you look at guys like that, maintaining my man Malcolm Jenkins, I, there's no question that I love what I'm seeing in that regard because I think that there's nowhere to go but up. Their defense was anemic. I think they gave up about uh, an NFL two worst, uh, NFL worst 72 plays of 20 yards or more. That's just bad. They have to make those corrections. They're going to make those corrections. I think about Sam Bradford. I'm suspect on his health, especially with those skinny legs of his. I think that he's right for the taking in, in the NFL. He certainly doesn't need to be running a read option, or he's going to see a lot more than Terrell Suggs in the very near future. But I'm going to surmise and assume all of these predictions get, are being made on everybody else for the Cowboys and everybody else for the Eagles being healthy. I believe with the Sam Bradford, with the DeMarco Murray and Orion Matthews, with the Jordan Matthews, with Al Galore and those boys, with Huff more so than Raleigh Cooper, with a Selleck and Ertz, with a decent offensive nine, not as elite, not as elite as Dallas's is, but nevertheless definitely proficient enough. I think the combination of all of those things with a defense that's still going to be suspect, but vastly improved compared to what it was last year. 
I believe that the accident that is waiting to happen will not be Bradford going down and Mark Sanchez having to come in, but I believe that the Dallas Cowboys will have more of a problem than the Philadelphia Eagles are. I'm also predicting that Tim Tebow is going to make the team. I'm also predicting that Tim Tebow is going to come in there. The read option will be used with him, and I believe that Tim Tebow will find a way to make a contribution in Chip Kelly's system as well. So all of those things being considered, I'm saying that the Dallas Cowboys are going this way and the Philadelphia Eagles are going that way. I agree with AP. Mm. And I reserve the right to hang in with my Dallas Cowboys. They still will win the NFC East. I'm going to say it again. I love Orlando Scandrick. I respect him as a player. It made me sick at my stomach when I saw Todd Archer's early tweet right straight from the practice field last night. But he's not Deion Sanders. He's just not. He's not Everson Walls. I'm sorry. And you know this better than anybody. If you have a deficient secondary, a, a shaky secondary, what is the best way to cover for said secondary? Rush. You rush the passer. And, and I believe that most people are underestimating what this rush is about to become. Now, Greg Hardy, it's going to be four games till he joins the fray here. And Rolando McClain, who might have been their best defensive player last year in the, in the middle at linebacker, it's going to be four games. But Randy Gregory is leaping off my TV screen in these preseason games. He can flat out rush the passer. Demarcus Lawrence, their second round pick of a year ago, we saw in the playoffs he started to leap off your TV screen. And listen, Jeremy Mincy can rush the passer, and Tyrone and Jack Crawford can rush the passer. They, they're, they've got a two-deep rotation in, in the, the defensive front that is strong. And Sean Lee comes back at linebacker. God bless him. I hope he can stay healthy. Anthony Hitchens in the playoffs was all over the field making plays. So the front seven, I think, with Rolando McClain, once they get rolling after the first four, and Molly mentioned their first four games, starting with your New York football so, giants, Sunday then they have to go they have to go to the Eagles and they get the Falcons at home, and they have to go to New Orleans. If they could get through that stretch two and two, I think they would be off to the races. I'll take three and one, but two and two would be just fine. And you still have the best offensive line in pro football. With who running behind them? With Joseph who? Randall. No. And and not I happen. I keep waiting on Darren McFadden, and I'm not, not going to go there yet. Not I, happen. Okay. No, you're not? <laughs> not buying them and, two running backs. Okay. Every time Joseph Randall touched the football last year, which was 51 times, seven yards happened. An average of seven yards. That's pretty good. He he was uh, big 12, all Big 12 first team. You know, I loved him in college. Uh, again, am I saying he's DeMarco Murray? I'm not. And to your point, I tweeted twice late mm -hmm. at night after Eagles preseason games. As a Cowboy fan, the Eagles look scary good to me because Stephen A. mentioned Chip Kelly's got two big new toys and Nelson Aguilar and Kenyon Barner. And both of them are just game breakers and they scare me because he hasn't had that. And the defense with Byron Maxwell, we can go on and on. That defensive front looks strong to me and that they're playing with a lot of energy and emotion early that, that's impressive to me. But do they have, they got a bunch of quarterbacks, but do they have a quarterback? That's what I want to know. Do they have one that you can trust? Stephen A., if it comes to Mark Sanchez, he is the ultimate accident waiting to happen. That's so, why I said Tebow. Okay. All right, well, it might be. And if I have to decide between, if, if it's Tebow versus my Cowboys, I'm going to be in a bind. I'm going to have a hard time. I, I must that's admit to you. No, no, no. That's, what I, you. that's what I love. Yes. I would sit there, I would sit there and go just like this. Yeah, you would. Uh, so what you gonna do, Skip? Yeah, and I might what sit you gonna and look do? Right what back you gonna, at you just like this and say, for, I don't know. That's I don't right. Know. And I'll be yeah. like this. And then you'll come on the air the next day with your opinion. I'm like, no. You ain't alive. We yeah. wanna hear from you because you don't wanna take you you can't pick between the two. You I have can't. nothing to say. Nothing. nothing. That's what's gonna happen to you, Skip. At some point, it's gonna be T Boy against your cowboys. <laughs> and you got to make a call. And I'm just gonna sit up there and look at you. What what you gotta say? What you gotta say now? You know what? Oh, you might need to it. film that viewing. I, right. You, you know what I would do, honestly? Turn off the TV. No, I would not. <laughs> I grew up a Dallas Cowboy fan, and I remain a Dallas yeah. Cowboy fan, and I would pick my Cowboys. I would have to. I'm Lies. I would. Lies. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. No, I would. no fly Eagles fly here. He's got no, his no. blue on. Obviously, mm -hmm. question marks with this whole division, top no. to bottom. So we shall see. No question marks with Seattle's secondary, though. Wait till you hear what the Seahawks' Michael Bennett had to say. No holding back from this guy.
His brother never holds back either. We'll react next. Antonio Pierce will stay put. Stay here.